Hey everyone, uh, today I'm gonna do a little training uh, specifically on customer retention and answering the question of what do I do when I actually get a customer? And if you have questions on this customer retention topic, go ahead and put them in the comments. I am happy to explain this. And what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna walk you through um, like a little flow chart of what I would call the customer journey. And then I'm gonna show you like different milestones that we want customers to go through uh, in their first 90 days so that they have a really good experience with us and they're able to solve as many problems as possible. Uh, if you guys want a copy of the checklist that I'm gonna show you, it's called the new customer journey. Um, let me actually pull it up real quick. If you're on live, by the way, say hi, uh, because that is fun when you say hi. All right, um, new customer journey. Okay, so here is the new customer journey. And let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see it better, especially if you're on your phone. Will you let me know in the uh, comments if you can see this okay? Um, hey, Jamie, how's it going? Hi, Karen. So uh, the new customer journey, what we go through here is in the first 90 days, this is what we want people to do. We want them to order. We want them to set up their recurring order. We want to invite them to the business overview. Okay, good. You guys can see it. Could be bigger. I think I got it. Um, second order, third order. Let's see. Maybe, that, maybe that's better. Um, attended their first company event, their first referral connection that became a customer, and a second invitation to a business overview. These particular steps are really, really helpful to help your customers get the kind of transformation you're looking for. And so when we're actually going through and we're drawing this out, I want to show you um, what this looks like just from like a flowchart perspective. I'm curious if you guys um, like flowcharts or not. My business partner's like, I do not like your flowcharts at all. I personally like flowcharts a lot. So let me know if you guys are yes flowchart, team flowchart, or team flow, no flowchart. But I suppose I'll know if you jump off the this <laughs> or not, if you're team flowchart. Okay, so the first thing, this is our uh, customer journey. And retention starts at the beginning. It is not just the follow-up process. Starts with every interaction. Fun fact, um, people are much more likely to strike a deal with you, negotiate a successful negotiation, if you have something in common, even something just as trivial as like chips. Uh, this has been researched extensively. So if you're like, I like graphic tees, Tasha likes graphic tees, you're more likely to want to engage in business with me or a negotiation if we have something in common. This is why it's important on social media or in real life to show a bit of ourselves, our genuine and authentic self, so that people can say, hey, I have something in common with you. That is something actually that increases retention because they're more likely to want to do deals with you. So here's what the customer journey looks like. Uh, we start with network, our network. Either it's new network or it's old network. This is where we want to find common interests. Uh, when we have common interests, we are already planting seeds for retention all the way down the road. Uh, let me know if you have experienced this. Just maybe write um, like, yup, common interests or something like that. If you do business with people because you have something in common with them. Um, okay, so then we invite them to a sales conversation. Um, which, and this can be one-on-one -on -one or group, but when we have the sales conversation, what's really important here when it comes to retention is this process of gaining input. Uh, when it comes, the way I would do it, like when it comes to your business goals, what sorts of things are important to you or what are your business goals, what's hard for you when it comes to your business, and you'll have your version of that for your particular problem set that you solve with your company. If you do not learn about their like long-term goals or what's important to them, it's going to hurt your retention in the long run. So the best retention tool is a good customer-centric sales process. This is why I wrote a book called Customer First 
because when we have an approach that is centered on customers, everything, all the business indicators get better and better and better. Okay. Now at the end of the sales conversation, there are a couple of paths. Um, if you say, I don't want to make any assumptions, would you like to know how to earn money with this particular company? If they say yes, then we are going to do a recruiting conversation. Right. And then we're going to have them do their first event. Now, interestingly enough, once they recruit a customer or another business builder, their own personal retention increases. Here's my theory. When you're not there, you can't always talk to them. But when my friend, you know, let's say it's a skincare and I'm like, oh my gosh, your skin looks amazing. She's like, oh yeah, I'm using that stuff that you recommended to me. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I better use it too. Or maybe I'll buy more. Um, having other buyers in their community increases their own results. It's sort of like going to a gym. If my friends go to a gym, then I'm more likely to go to the gym and I'm more likely to have a healthy lifestyle. If none of my friends go to the gym, I am less likely to go to the gym, have a less healthy work style. So most of us are in the business of lifestyle change. And so that's why it's helpful to, um, you know, get groups together. Now, if they do not uh, want to earn money, uh, we're going to do what's called a wish list appointment. And we're going to review their goals. We're going to teach them how to order. Uh, we're going to show them how the best way to get free stuff. Um, and we're going to offer what's called a second appointment special. And I'm super curious if you guys um, offer what's called a first appointment special, which is kind of like if you decide to order this today, I'll give you this free thing to kind of sweeten the pot. Um, you can do that for a second order too, because if you think back to the milestones, then, right, we want to make sure that we get in their first 90 day, first order, second order, third order. And so we can actually incentivize that to lock it in. My theory is if you have someone that does three orders in 90 days, uh, they're going to retain themselves after that. So after we do the wish list appointment, let's say we're going to now do follow up. And we're going to follow up on day one, day seven, um, we'll call it day 30, day 60, and day 90. And this is the customer retention process. Now, one of the big questions that you are likely having right now is this. Oh, by the way, I'm going to take this down. So if you guys are watching and you want to take a picture of this, I'm gonna give you five seconds to do it. So five, four, three, two, one. All right, I'm gonna stop the share. I'm gonna come back over to the customer journey. So if you're like, okay, in 90 days, what am I trying to do? Right, this is what, this is what you're trying to do. So when you're reaching out to them on day one, you're trying to solidify their first order um, and you're trying to make sure you schedule a wish list appointment because that's next on the agenda. If you're calling them on day 30, you might, you, you're trying to like say, Hey, do you have any success stories? Um, I want to make sure you have one. And so if we follow, I think it's a lot easier. I'm sure you've heard the whole idea of intention. Do your business with intention. And I'm like, what do you even mean by do your business with intention? Intention is about knowing what action do I want them to take as a result of this interaction. So in this particular video, the action I want you to take is I want you to write the word checklist so that um, you get this new customer journey, customer milestone checklist. Um, if I know that, then I'm going to show you the checklist and I'm going to say, get the checklist, right? Same thing with your customers. If you want them to have a success story and that's on your list of milestones, then you're much more likely to say, hey, have you had a positive success story yet? And if they have, hey, can you share that with me? Now they're more enrolled in the transformation. If they do not have a success story yet, we need to say, oh my gosh, let's make sure you get a success story so that you know, you're able to feel like your problems are being solved. Let's focus on getting you a success story. If you know in the first 90 days, you want them to attend some sort of company event, 
um, then you'll know to invite them to a, a company event. Um, and so I'm hoping that you can see how really understanding what the milestones are, how much of a difference that it makes when it comes to uh, this concept, I'm going to put it in quotes, doing your business with intention. Um, if you guys have any questions on um, customer retention, go ahead and pop them in the um, in the comments here. I just want to give you, I'm going to pull the, the flow chart up again real quick uh, while you guys do that. If you don't have any questions, I'll just hop off. I feel like this was pretty clear. Oh no, I lost my, um, there we go. So just to walk you back through the customer journey, it starts with every interaction. When we network, we make sure we're aligned on common interests. Uh, number two, we invite people to a sales conversation. They either do a recruiting conversation because they're interested in the business. If they're not interested in the business, we do a wish list appointment uh, where we walk through their goals, how to order, how to get free stuff, offer a second appointment special. And then they go into follow-up and we're going to reach out to them on uh, like the day after they order, 7, 30, 60, 90. And the purpose is to move them um, towards each milestone on their customer journey. And if you want that. All right. If you guys do not have any questions, I'm going to hop off. I also want to let you know. Oh, I do have a question. Okay. Do Amy, thank you so much for asking this question. If you guys have more questions, I'll stick around. Um, do I suggest a system for keeping up with who and when you need to do follow-ups when you have a lot of customers? Amy, yes. So inside um, our Customer First Mastermind, what we give our clients, we have two sets. We have uh, customer journey milestones and then we have builder milestones. So it's a similar process, right? And so what we give our clients is we have a spreadsheet and you could just create this from scratch, but it's a spreadsheet that just has the milestones lined up, right? So their names would go here, milestones would go here, um, and then they just put the dates when they hit the milestones. Uh, I think Excel can work really well. I think, Amy, you're getting into the land of how do I, how do I manage my contacts with where they are in the process? And this is what's called a CRM. It's called a Customer Relationship Management System. There's a lot of different ways to do this. Um, this the customer relationship management system that we use because we uh, run our businesses primarily on Facebook. Uh, we use one that my friend Jenna, uh, her company started is called Group Track CRM, which is great if you're all your people are on Facebook and Instagram. Um, other ones that are helpful if it you're just like networking like out, out in the streets. I don't know if that's the exact right word for it. Um, but if you're doing like it in real life stuff, then I would recommend something like contact mapping or penny. And when you have a, a system like, con like the first thing, Amy, is I think knowing your customer milestones. Um, the second thing you need to be able to do is you need to be able to set tasks. So you mentioned using Project Broadcast a little, but not like I should. So Project Broadcast is going to send one message out to everybody. That is not the same thing that I'm talking about. Because let's say, Amy, you are in, like, my mastermind. I don't know if you're in my mastermind or if you, Amy Phillips feels like a common name. Maybe you have been in one of my masterminds. If so, I'm sorry. So if you're in my mastermind, we're going to send, like, emails out with like, here's this video and here's a story and here's an encouraging thing. But I'm going to go into my CRM and I'm going to do things like, oh, you're new to the group, send new to the group message. Then I might set a task that's like, make sure they've logged into the portal, right? Because I have my own milestones for my customers. And so project broadcast, depending on how technical you get with and this is probably why you're not using it so much is you have to get really granular if you're going to manage milestones that are like this, right? You'd have to set up a separate sequence that's send this on day one, send this on whatever day. And I think that starts to get really detailed and a total headache. My biggest recommendation is if you communicate via text with your customers, 
would be to get something like contact mapping and then just say like if i re let's say you bought yesterday and tell me amy if this is helpful um let's say you bought yesterday today is the 24th so i would set a task for tomorrow that says day one and i would say something like hey how are you feeling about your order blah blah blah, blah, blah right and then i would set another task for um september second that would say day seven message and then i might message them here's my day seven message what that does is it allows me to have some flexibility because i'm not going to send a day seven message if they called me the day before and we already talked about the day seven message thing and that's where i think that automation for customer retention gets really difficult because so I heard when I was at one of the GoPro events several years ago, there's a speaker who said about retention, do you know why every single person on your tree stopped ordering? And they were like, no. And then the speaker said, that's why they're not ordering. And I was like, ooh, ouch, right? Like that is painful. And so I personally believe that there are things that we can do from a broadcast perspective, like don't forget. This is the next step in your process. I just don't know if you can fully replace that with, hey, Amy, just curious, did you get a success story with your son's allergies yet? Right? Like there's just no replacing that. And it comes back to that common interest, people that, you know, we have in common. And when we um, compliment people, they like us more. So there's a great video um, you can look up on YouTube, Amy, called The Science of Influence. And it's an overview of the driving factors of influence. And one is liking people. And one of the things that helps people to like you more is if you compliment them or if you have stuff in common with them. Really, really hard to do from an automation perspective, which is why even in our, what I'll call automated sequences, we do a lot of things that help you to get to know me because the more things we have in common the i mean the more likely we are to enter into some sort of business agreement um and so it's important to me that we do what's called um scaled personalization so i don't know if somebody wants to drop that in the chat scaled personalization so what scaled personalization looks like is i have like retention outlines for week two, week four, week six, right? And I can send those out, but I also have the option to not send it out. So that's kind of what I think about um, CRMs. When we work with our clients, um, we'll usually just use really fundamental, like uh, apps like contact mapping or spreadsheets or whatever, something really simple until they have a big enough team where emails and text uh, marketing make more sense. So that's what I think about that. Um, I don't see any other questions popping up right now. Um, thank you, Amy, for asking that. I hope that was helpful for everybody. And I think I'm going to wrap this little mini training on um, customer journey up. Uh, just last thing, if you guys want this checklist, uh, just go ahead and write the word checklist. We'll get it over to you. And if you guys um, want to go through our next mastermind, time management, sales, retention, and uh, recruiting, all this checklist, all the templates, all the processes, uh, just shoot me a message or leave a comment that says, you know, I'd like details on the mastermind or something like that. Um, and we'll know what to do with you. And I think that's it. I hope you guys have an awesome day. And I'll talk to you soon.